Hello, here's the key for the 3.7 to 3.10 quiz on AP Classroom. All right, so the first question, the original solution used to make the solutions for the standard curve was prepared by dissolving 2.60 grams of COCl2, and here's the molar mass, 130 grams per mole, in enough water to make 100 milliliters of solution. What's the molar concentration of the solution? So we want to calculate the molarity. Molarity is moles divided by liters. So we have to convert the 2.60 grams into moles, and then we have to convert 100 milliliters into liters. And I showed that calculation right over here. So here's that calculation. Uh, the molarity equation, it's moles of solute divided by liters of solution. Um, so to get moles, we take the mass that's given in the problem divided by the molar mass and we get 0 0.0200 moles and then to get the molarity now we divide that that number of moles divided by the liters so 100 milliliters is 0 0.100 liters and this is our answer right there 0 0.200 molar okay so now we go back to our choices that's going to be uh, letter a okay number two is another calculation we have if uh, 50 milliliters of one molar NaOH is diluted with distilled water to a volume of 2.0 liters. The concentration of the resulting solution is one of those five. All right, so for the calculation, uh, for this we're going to use M1V1 equals M2V2. So this is the dilution equation. Um, so this is our original concentration, one molar. Here's our uh, the, the volume, and we're going to dilute it to two liters. Now it said 50 milliliters. We have to have the, the units of volume match up. So I converted the 50 milliliters into liters. Um, so I just had to convert one to match the other. And then divide to solve for M2, and you get 0 0.025 molar. So that's going to be letter A. Question three. A student wishes to prepare 2 liters of 0 0.100 molar KiO3, and here's its molecular weight, that's the, the molar mass. The proper procedure to weigh this out is going to be one of those. This is another calculation where we have to figure out the mass. So we're going to take this molarity equation, rearrange it to solve for moles. So moles of solute is equal to molarity times liters of solution. So then we can take the molarity times the volume and you get the number of moles then we have to figure out how many grams of that that solute we need so multiply by the molar mass now this is a mole conversion and you get 42.8 grams of solute so <clears throat> the the way to set this up is we want to take that's letter b we want to take 42.8 grams of kio3 and add water until the final homogeneous solution so you have it all dissolved has a volume of two liters so the, the other two that has 42.8 A and D would give you a volume that's, that's uh, just a little bit more than, than two liters. So and really the, the actual way that you want to do that is to, the, the proper procedure, is to use a volumetric flask that has a, a volume of two liters, and you fill up the bulb maybe about halfway up, and then you dissolve um, the 42.8 grams of solute in this half-filled volumetric flask and swirl that around until it's all dissolved and then you add water until you get to the mark on the neck and then you know you have exactly two liters. All right, so that's going to be letter B. Question number four. When 70 milliliters of 3.0 molar Na2CO3 is added to 30 milliliters of 1.0 molar NaHCO3, the resulting concentration of sodium ions is? So, this is another calculation. Show that over here. So first of all, we want to find the moles of sodium ions from each solution. So the calculation for each of these uh, original solutions is right here. For the Na2CO3, so to get the number of moles, it's molarity times liters. So we do that for each of these different solutions. For Na2CO3, we also have to factor in that there's two sodium ions in the formula. So once you get the number of moles, 0.21 moles, then you're going to multiply by that 2 to 1 mole ratio and you get the moles of just sodium ions. Do the same thing for NaHCO3, but in this case there's only it's only one mole of sodium ions in the in the in the formula. So once you get the number of moles, it's going to be the same as the number of moles of sodium. 
So then the molarity of the resulting mixture is the total moles of sodium divided by the total volume. So molarity is moles divided by liters. So here we add together the moles of sodium ions and you divide by the total volume. So it ends up being 0.45 divided by 0 0.10 and we end up with 4.5 molar. So then we go back, that's going to be uh, letter D is our answer. <clears throat> Question number five. Now here we're performing a fractional distillation. So distillation separates these liquids based on their, their boiling point. So uh, we use four clean dry flasks. The student collect the distillate over the volume ranges A, B, C, and D. Um, over what volume range should the student collect the distillate of the compound with the stronger intermolecular forces? So this is the key right here. If there's stronger intermolecular forces, that means the boiling point will be higher. So that means we want to look at the area that has the, the highest boiling point. So that's going to be this, the D range right there. Okay, so it's letter D. <clears throat> In a paper chromatography experiment, a sample of a pigment is separated into two compounds, X and Y, as shown in the figure above. The surface of the paper is moderately polar. What can be con concluded about X and Y based on the experimental results? Okay, so with chromatography, you separate components based on polarity. <clears throat> so in this case, we have, um, there's always the two phases. There's the stationary phase and the mobile phase. In this case, the, <clears throat> the stationary phase is the paper, and it says the paper is moderately polar. The mobile phase is the solution, and in, in this case it says it's hexane, C6H14. Well, anything made out of carbon and hydrogen only, <clears throat> so they're hydrocarbons, it's going to be nonpolar. So you have a polar stationary phase and you have a nonpolar mobile phase. And what happens is the solution will keep climbing up the paper until it's somewhere near the top. And the components that are closer you know more similar to the mobile phase will move more with it so in this case we can say that component x moved more than component y so it's more like the mobile phase so we can say component x is more nonpolar component y is less nonpolar another way to look at it you can say component y is more polar component x is less polar so now you look at your choices down here um, a and B, it has nothing to do with the molar mass in this case. We can say X is more polar than Y, Y is more polar than X. Um, so it's uh, Y is more polar than X, so it's going to be letter D. The one that's most similar to the mobile phase is going to travel the farthest when you, when you do this paper chromatography. Okay, anyway, number seven. Which of the following molecules is least soluble in water? So this is the, the like dissolves like rule. So water is polar, so we want to find the one that's least polar. So letter B, this is a this is going to be a nonpolar molecule because of symmetry, so it's going to be letter B. All the other ones have that uh, OH, it's bent. There's a there's a polar bond to it, but B is 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 nonpolar. Sodium chloride is least soluble in which of the following liquid? So it's pretty much the same question as number seven. So sodium chloride is an ionic compound. Ionic compounds are soluble in polar uh, liquids. So we want the one that's going to be nonpolar. So it's going to be letter B, CCl4, because of the symmetry with a tetrahedral molecule. All these other ones are going to have hydrogen bonding, so they're polar. So the sodium chloride would be very soluble in those. So it's letter B. And that's all for the key. All right, have a good day.